And now, what's today's environment? Today's environment is, well, I got to be able to do cloud. And yes, clouds use web serving and web app serving, which we have today. But as one of these surveys will show you, not only do we have to be able to do that, we have to be able to do that and incorporate that into the applications that we've had running on these platforms for so long. And we got to figure out how much of that cloud technology are we going to integrate with these modern applications. Now, in the world today, and you as a, as a user of IBM I, you've probably seen this. In the world today, there are plenty of competitors out there in the world saying, oh, cloud, do you want to do cloud? If you want to do cloud, sorry, you've got to move off of IBM I because IBM I doesn't do containers. And so that yeah, got to move off IBM I. And that's just false. It's just false. If you've heard me talk anywhere for the last two years, you've heard me talk about how it's IBM I and collect cloud technology is how you move forward with modernization. I wrote a nice blog article about it. I've got full presentations about it. But the key here is that we have over time been adding and evolving this architecture so that <clears throat> IBM I and cloud technology is where you want to go into the future. The applications that you have, even the web-based applications that you have, are the beginnings of where you want to go for your next generation of applications, but they are not the end-all, be-all. You need your next-gen application to be developed in a way that's very different from the way it was back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. Rather than having a waterfall approach, which may take you 12 to 18 to 24 months to get to your new version of your software, you need to be able to take in a new business requirement and turn it around quickly. And that requires tools and processes that allow you to do these things called DevOps, which is the flow from development into operations very quickly, or CICD, which is continuous integration, continuous deployment, where you integrate new capabilities and it gets deployed very quickly all of which requires a new agile approach to do development instead of the traditional long waterfall development processes that are out there. And so as we do this, we need the incorporation of the technologies that allow our customers and the developers who work for them to do this to be supported on the IBM I platform. Similarly, a new next-gen app application has to be able to take those modules that they created in ILE and service them up as services that are available to be called from things that are expecting a cloud to respond to them. And you need to be able to, from inside your application, call out to those services because that's where a lot of great new value is going to be. And so if you're going to be doing that, you're not going to be tied to one programming language. You're going to have to blend your solutions so that RPG and COBOL and SQL do what they're really good at, transactions against a relational database. But then you have other languages that are meant to do things like services or web pages or analytics or machine learning, have those languages do the part of your solution, your application that they're built to do. And then you've got to recognize that when you want to put all of these things together, you don't have to implement them all yourself. And while some of it can run on IBM I, if you get, for example, an open source package that runs a particular set of robots or sensors and it runs in pace and it runs on IBM I, that's great. But if you have something that you're not going to run on IBM I, but you want to take advantage of it out in the cloud, you can do that. It's all part of your next gen app solution. And so you can have IBM I working together with stuff that's out there and available in the cloud if you prepare your application to do services and provide services. And we've had to modify our architecture to enable things so that things that are written in ILE and SQL stored procedures and so on, that they can be created as services that can be called by things outside of IBM I. When you do that, when you have an architecture that allows you to do that, you have a path forward for these applications so that they can become modern not have to move off the platform and still gain the benefit of all this technology that might be out there and available in the cloud. And in fact, you can have your technology in a cloud creating services. It is what many of our ISVs are doing today, creating software as a service, sometimes even as services as a service, running on IBM I in a cloud. It's as far as a customer knows or a partner knows, it's out there running in 
a cloud. It doesn't matter that it's not running in one of the big name clouds. It's a service that's providing value. 